Welcome back to part four of refurbishing my Meddings M4 pillar drill. Today we're going to be continuing with making the bushes for the drive pulley that belongs to the motor and also uh, dressing the motor shaft so hopefully those two parts will fit together and uh, hopefully that will be something that uh, we can put on one side and then get on to other parts of this project. Well this is where we got to in the last video this is the larger part of the bush assembly um, ready for assembly into the board pulley when we get to that stage and here is the smaller bush which goes inside of that uh, the reason I made it in two parts was actually just to save material I could have made the whole thing out of a big chunk like that but I wanted to save material so I thought this was an easier way this has already been bored to size it needs to be faced and uh, whilst it's easy to hold like this it would be um, good to put the keyway in on the shaping machine. Uh, that was also part of my logic in making this in two parts. It's easier to hold it um, as a smaller component like this. So before we get to that, uh, I want to look at the motor shaft. Since it's not too difficult to split an induction motor like this while it's on the bench, I've done that and removed the rotor, set it up in the lathe with tailstock support so that I can uh, dress the damaged portion of the shaft uh, carefully and to size. Well I was a bit concerned about the uh, whether the center is actually true with the shaft so I've just double checked I'm um, set, set up on the bearing portion of the shaft again and uh, let's see well that doesn't look too bad to me that looks like barely half a thou uh, I was thinking about whether I need to just double check the center to make sure it's not damaged but I don't think I'm going to improve on that. So I think I have confidence to go ahead and continue dressing the damaged portion of the shaft. I'll go very carefully because I don't want to take it under size. I think what we need to do now is uh, measure this with the micrometer. Um, although it looks bad, uh, the main question is whether it's uh, within the circumference of 0.625, which is what we're looking for. Actually, it's not 0.625, it's 0.64 and a bit. So um, we'll check, see what it is. Well, it doesn't look good, but I'm just uh, checking all around with my micrometer and uh, it does seem to be on, on size. Well, as it happens, the blank gear I ordered, this blank steel gear, that also has a 5 8 inch diameter bore. Um, I hope that's the standard size, uh, to standard tolerance. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll just see if that fits on, and then we'll know we are reasonably close to size if it does. Yeah, that feels like a good fit to me. So I think we probably got that to the position we want it to be in. So we'll have a look now at the inner bush. And now this is gonna be more challenging because it's longer. <laughs> uh, easy to get something on that fits, that's only half an inch wide. But when you've got something that's two inches wide, uh, that's a bit more demanding. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, that feels all right to me. I think, I think we're there. So uh, I think we'll stop there. And the next thing to do is to put the keyway in the bush. I'm just going to finish this job off by regenerating the chamfer on the end of the shaft. Just make it look a little bit better than uh, leaving it um, with those burrs on. You could say it's cosmetic, but I think it will just finish the job off nicely.
I think that's as good as we're going to get. While we've got this set up in the lathe and I've got my lathe on the running on the higher speed setting, I thought it would be a good idea just to check the centrifugal switch for the starter uh, coil uh, just to see if that's working. So we'll uh, ramp the speed up and see if the centrifugal switch operates. Well, that looks fine. Just to show you that I did protect the end at the other end of the shaft. I've got to face this to length. This needs to be uh, up to that shoulder there, so I'm going to cut that off, uh, face this in the lathe to length, and then we can mount this in the shaper. So here I'm just tramming the small bush in the shaping machine. Uh, it's necessary because it doesn't sit very deep in the vise and is relatively long. So just getting that right in the vertical plane and then similarly in the horizontal plane. So that we nicely set up for machining the keyway. The next thing I need to do is uh, find the edge of the bush. So I'm doing this by uh, just putting a spacer in there with a known thickness with a feeder gauge just to uh, mark off the edge of the cutting tool, uh, measuring the width of the cutting tool. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, traverse the table across to um, get one edge of the slot. The, the cutting tool is actually narrower than the slot so I'm going to have to take a couple of passes to get the full width, but I think you can get the picture. And of course I'm measuring the outside diameter as well, a little bit of arithmetic and we'll know how far to traverse it. Unfortunately my clock uh, only has half inch of travel so I had to take it in two bytes to get the necessary uh, distance. One.
that's in position. Mm -hmm. Here from uh, the length of my slotting tool as compared with the length of the bush, that there really isn't much margin for error. So I had to be very careful in setting up the length of stroke and also the position of the stroke just so that I can get the tool through. Really, the tool should have been a bit longer. Now, I have to admit, in the past when I've used my shaper to produce uh, keyways, I've usually just relied on the scratch marks to get the center line and to be confident that I'm running down the center of the bore. But uh, because this is a longer bore, um, about two inches, compared with only 5 eighths bore, it's probably a bit more important to set it up like this. Um, but it wasn't much trouble and it, and it was uh, quite quick. Okay, having cut uh, the first slot, the next thing to do is move the table across by the difference between the width of the slot and the width of the actual cutting tool. So I'm just moving that across now and then cut right down to depth again and hopefully that will be the right width for the keyway. I've set the pulley up in the four jaw chuck again just to dress up um, a couple of the grooves, setting it over to uh, the correct angle for the V-belt. I'm also going to tidy up the lower face of the pulley. Uh, that's probably cosmetic, uh, but um, the grooves aren't. They've been damaged. Somebody's hit them with a hammer, so I'm just tidying those up. The other advantage of facing up the lower side of the pulley like this, it gives you a datum face for setting up again should uh, I need to remove the pulley and reinstall it. And in fact, I did need to do that, so it was helpful to have uh, a nice uh, face to uh, put the clock on. And as usual, we add a couple of chamfers, an external chamfer, and then uh, finally an internal one just to finish the job off nicely. So here I'm beginning to cut away the old boss. Uh, the cut will become intermittent in a while as I go into the webs that were there as part of the structure of the old pulley. Uh, so it's just a process here of packing out the centre of the pulley and uh, bringing it to, um, to size according to my drawing. Putting the large bush to the inside of the pulley wasn't as easy as it looked. Uh, in the end I had to just uh, um, counterbore very slightly to get a trial size so that I could um, uh, be confident that uh, I wasn't going to overbore it. But uh, eventually I managed to get there and uh, it was a nice fit uh, seated on the perimeter and also the inner face there. So it's been bored to size now and the adhesive has been put in and the large bush is now uh, just pressed in place with tailstock support. Putting out the larger bush now, ready to receive the smaller bush. Uh, the dimensions um, 
or rather the fit, uh, proved to be a little more of a challenge than I anticipated. I think that has to do with the materials I'm using. So you'll hear a little bit more about that in my comments at the end of the video. So I've set the pulley up now ready for drilling and tapping and I have, uh, I'm going to start by actually drilling a pilot hole for the, uh, for the uh, quarter inch UNF um, set screw and uh, so that pilot hole is going right through the uh, rim of the pulley and then into the, into the boss in the centre. Uh, what I'm going to do then is open up that, uh, that um, hole to be a clearance for the tap so that will then provide uh, support for the tap as I tap into the boss uh, at the center of the pulley. Tapping was a little bit tricky I had to use a BA spanner to uh, grip the to grip the tap, uh, just sufficient height there above the rim of the pulley. But uh, it was successful and we got the job done. So here's a good example of why machining a datum face is sometimes helpful. It uh, enabled me to clock the pulley up in the four-door chuck, ready for uh, reducing the um, inner bush to form a boss for the pulley, uh, to enable it to um, fit up snugly against the shoulder on the motor shaft. Things have not worked out as I expected. The first big lesson in this is make it out of a solid piece of aluminium. Don't try to bush aluminium against aluminium. It uh, cold welds together and uh, can be very awkward. So that's lesson number one. Uh, lesson number two is to, if you've produced uh, an assembly drawing, make sure you have it with you. Uh, I tried to do this without the assembly drawing and I bored this smaller bore too far and it basically uh, cut off the flange of the smaller pulley. So there we are, that's a big mistake on my part. Um, I will be pushing this again, would you believe, to, uh, to uh, reclaim this, um, this lost part.